A breakthrough in large language models just happened, and it claims to be 10 times faster and 10 times less expensive using a completely novel technique lifted from text to image generation models. This is diffusion large language models. The way that traditional large language models work is it generates one token and then it generates the next token and so on and so forth. So sequential token generation, and it cannot generate the next token until it has the previous one. In comes diffusion large language models. It actually generates the entire response all at once in a really rough way and then iteratively refines it into what it considers to be the right answer. This is exactly how diffusion text to image generation models work. So with text to image generation models, specifically diffusion models, it starts with a completely noisy image and gradually refines it. And over time with enough refinement, it becomes an image that you can actually tell what's going on. And it does that all at once. It doesn't do one pixel at a time and then goes on to the next pixel. And so they took that approach and applied it to text-based models, large language models. The company is called Inception Labs, and this is the first production grade diffusion based large language model. So on the left, what you're seeing is what a traditional autoregressive LLM looks like. So it generates one token, then it generates the next and the next. But over here, you can see much more quickly over 14 iterations versus 75 iterations. It actually starts with a really rough kind of almost nonsensical set of text and then refines it until it becomes the actual solution. It's pretty incredible. And again, 10 times faster, 10 times less expensive. And this is gonna be especially powerful with test time compute. With all of the scaling laws at inference time, these cutting edge models have actually become pretty slow to get to the final answer. If we're working at 40, 50, 60 tokens per second, it could be thinking for minutes before providing you with the answer based on test time compute. But now, at a thousand tokens per second, you might just be waiting a few seconds for that answer. And so all of a sudden we're able to throw a lot more test time compute at problems and still get answers in a reasonable amount of time. And I've been saying this for a while, the biggest bottleneck right now for scaling up intelligence is actually the speed at which these models perform. For example, if you're doing vibe coding, you put in a prompt, you're potentially waiting 5, 10, 15 minutes for the agent to come up with the solution, iterate on the solution, and imagine if that were just 30 seconds. I mean, the potential is crazy. And it doesn't require custom hardware either. These numbers, Mercury is 10 times faster than Frontier Speed Optimized LLMs. It runs at over a thousand tokens per second on an NVIDIA H100. That is not a custom chip. That is a standard chip that every other large language model can and usually does run on. And this is actually a code generation model. So it specializes in coding, which is even crazier because this really has the potential to change how coding works overnight. So let me just show you it in action really quickly before I dive into the details. Make a particle system where particles follow the mouse cursor. Add controls for particle speed, size, and color. Use HTML5 canvas for smooth animation. So I'm gonna hit enter. And there we go. Look how crazy fast that was. Literally seconds. And here we go. Here it is. Obviously, this is a very simple demo, but it could get more complicated. So let's increase the size of the particles. And it just works really well. And the point is, it's insanely fast. Write a simple bigram model in Python. Okay, so there it is. And it's interesting because when it's actually running, it looks sequential, but that's not actually what's happening. It's actually generating the entire thing all at once in a really kind of rough and noisy way and then iteratively improves it and refines it. And that's how you get this speed. It's a completely new approach. And if you've watched this channel at all, I've tried other approaches like the Mamba architecture and other things, and they never quite work that well, but this seems to work incredibly well. Now, I actually see this diffusion effect up here, so you can actually turn it on and you can actually see what the diffusion process looks like. All right, so let me show you one more, and actually, I'm gonna slow it down because it's so fast, it's hard to see what's actually happening. So you could see just gibberish, nonsense, and then all of a sudden, over time, and very quick time, it refines itself to actually make sense. And we have a snake game right in the console, and it works. Obviously, again, very simple, but that's all it takes. 
and it is crazy fast. So I can't wait to try this with vibe coding. It's really gonna change everything because I'm kind of tired of waiting so long in between prompts. And thanks to the sponsor of this segment, Growth School. 2025 is a critical year. We have agents entering the workforce and AI infiltrating basically every aspect of our work. And a lot of people think AI is going to take their jobs, but I say other humans using AI will take your jobs. So to become hyperproductive, you need to learn how to use AI. If you're watching this channel, you're already ahead of the pack, but you can go even further. A great way to learn cutting edge AI skills is by using Growth School's courses. Growth School is offering a three hour hands-on AI training and they will teach you how to use over 25 different AI tools. This is the way to be the star of your company. Whether you're in finance, sales, HR, recruiting, you should be learning AI and you can do so with Growth School. Growth School has helped over a million people upskill across the globe. This is normally a paid training, but right now for the first thousand signups, it will be free through my link down in the description below. So check out Growth School. Thanks again to them for sponsoring this segment and now, Back to the video. All right, but how does it perform? Obviously we have some benchmarks. Let's take a look at the details and benchmarks. So here is artificial analysis. On the X axis, we have output speed. On the Y axis, we have the coding index. So this is by artificial analysis. So all the way up in the top left, the output speed, very slow, Claude 3.5 haiku, but a very high score. Now. All the way over here with output speeds that are kind of insane, we have Mercury Coder Small, which is about equal with GPT-40 Mini. And then we have the Mercury Coder Mini all the way above 1100 tokens per second, which is pretty much equal with Deep Sea Coder V2 Lite and other small models. Now here's the thing, with more test time compute, these models can just be better, be smarter. And when you're running this fast, when you have this fast of inference speed, you can run a lot of test time compute in a very short period of time. So there's no reason these models can't get better. So here is their pitch. Current large language models are auto regressive. That basically just means it generates one token and then the next and the next, and you can't generate the next before generating the prior. Each token requires evaluating a neural network with billions of parameters. Frontier LLM companies are betting on test time computation to increase reasoning and error correction capabilities. But these long generations, these long thinking times cost a lot both in terms of latency and literal token cost. But diffusion models provide such a paradigm shift. These models operate with a coarse to fine generation process where the output is refined from pure noise over a few denoising steps as illustrated in the video above. And it's not just that they're faster, they are actually potentially better at reasoning. Listen to this. Because diffusion models are not restricted to only considering previous output, they are better at reasoning and at structuring their responses. And because diffusion models can continually refine their outputs, they can correct mistakes and hallucinations. So they generate the whole thing, they can see the whole thing, and they iterate and correct it all at once. It's crazy to think about. And this is the first time we've actually had a successful diffusion-based text large language model. It supports all use cases, including RAG, tool use, and agentic workflows. Here's another chart showing really how fast it is. These are the Mercury coders right here, and here is the second fastest one at the Quen 2.5 Coder 7B. That is a small model, but a fraction of the speed of this diffusion-based large language model. And so what if you can generate code so much more quickly? Let me show you what that looks like. This is Mercury versus Claude and ChatGPT. And look how much faster it is. Mercury is going to finish in just six seconds, whereas ChatGPT and Claude take obviously a lot longer. They actually had to fast forward it to get it done in a reasonable amount of time for the video. 36 seconds and 28 seconds. Really just a substantial multiple factor speed increase. This type of architecture with this speed and this size footprint have incredible implications. One, agents, that's the obvious one. Agents are only limited by the speed of the model that they're using because so much needs to be generated between agents, especially if they're thinking-based agents, then the speed is really the only bottleneck there. So all of a sudden, agents can work so much faster, get so much more done, have higher quality because of that. Next, it can also do more advanced reasoning with, again, such a cheaper architecture, such cheaper inference, such faster inference, you could do a lot more inference 
at test time. That allows the models to perform better. We've already seen multiple examples where the more thinking time a model gets, the better it performs. So now imagine you can compress that thinking down to a fraction of the amount of time and then you just let it go for the same amount of time, you get just so much more compute and such higher quality potential. And this is an interesting one that I hadn't actually thought of. So controllable generation. DLLMs can edit their output and generate tokens in any order, allowing users to infill text, align outputs with objectives like safety, or produce outputs that reliably conform to user-specified formats. Again, because it can do everything all at once, it kind of has more control over that output. And then finally, edge applications. And of course, that's what I'm really interested in. Because the footprint of these models is so small, but they are so capable, you can run them on your laptop or your desktop. These are smaller models to run on the edge. So Andre Karpathy, one of the leading minds in artificial intelligence, reposted this and added some comments. And if anybody is the right person to give their opinion on this, it's him. So listen to this. Most of the image video generation AI tools actually work this way, this way being diffusion and use diffusion, not auto regression. It's only text and sometimes audio that have resisted. So it's been a bit of a mystery to me and many others why for some reason text prefers auto regression, but images videos prefer diffusion. This turns out to be a fairly deep rabbit hole that has to do with the distribution of information and noise and our own perception of them in these domains. If you look close enough, a lot of interesting connections emerge between the two as well. All that is to say that this model has the potential to be different and possibly showcase new unique psychology or new strengths and weaknesses. I encourage people to try it out. And there was a paper about a month ago that came out called Large Language Diffusion Models that kind of proposes the same thing, but it didn't actually come with a working model. But now we have it. And if you want to check out this paper, I'll drop it in the description below. And so I think this really has the potential to be a new type of model that elicits new behavior out of these intelligent models. And I'm really excited to continue to try it out. I really want to plug it into Cursor and Windsurf. If you enjoyed this video, please consider giving a like and subscribe. And I'll see you in the next one.